We don't get this kind of showing for public hearings normally. My goodness. Thanks for everybody for joining us for our organizational meeting of our official year 2024. First time we're ever doing this in January. And so uh, you'll see on the agenda, we had to make some adjustments for a variety of things. We'll go through that when we get to that point. But first, we have a judge in the house. So why don't we do some swearing in so, or swearings in or whatever the plural is of that? Uh, who would you like to start with, Judge? Judge Morrissey, I guess I'll uh, go first here. Meet me over at the uh, for you. Oh, okay. Are you asking for Rossi? Yeah, it's right there. Raise your hand. Repeat after me, please. I state your name. Hi, Frank Sylvester Rossi the second. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the laws. That I will support the laws. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution laws. The Constitution laws of the State of New York. Of the State of New York. The ordinances, laws, and regulations. And the ordinances, laws, and regulations of the Village of Balsam Spa. Of the Village of Balsam Spa. And I will faithfully discharge my duties. And I will faithfully discharge my duties as Village Mayor. As Village Mayor. To the Village of Balsam Spa. To the Village of Balsam Spa. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Thank you. Next up, Trustee Pandensa. <laughs> I, Bernadette from Dance of Press, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the laws, that I will support the laws, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution laws, the Constitution and laws of the State of New York, of the State of New York, and the ordinances and laws and regulations, and the ordinances, laws, and regulations of the Village of Boston Spa, of the Village of Boston Spa, and I will faithfully discharge, and I will faithfully discharge my duties as Village Trustee, my duties as Village of Trustee. Village, village trustee, thank you. For the village of Balsam Spa. <laughs> For the village of Balsam Spa. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And in a moment for the first time, trustee Mary Price Bush. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the laws. That I will support the laws. And the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution laws. The Constitution laws. Of the State of New York. Of the State of New York. And the ordinances, laws, and regulations. And the ordinances, laws, and regulations. Of the Village of Alton Spa. Of the Village of Alton Spa. And I will faithfully discharge my duties. And I will faithfully discharge my duties. As Village Trustee. As Village Trustee. To the Village of Alton Spa. For the Village of Alton and if uh, you will, please, uh, let's give thanks to Judge Morrissey for coming out here tonight and doing his duties. <laughs> well, there are only two booths in the crowd. Don't worry, Your Honor. Well, uh, we're going to uh, dispense with uh, general speeches beyond just saying here's to a great 2024 and beyond uh, for our village. Uh, there's a lot to get done and a lot of work uh, that we've already 
uh, been proud of doing, but you can't really rely on that. You got to look forward here at this point and get the rest of what we need to get done done over the uh, next four years uh, in this uh, position. Uh, ben, Sean, looking forward to working with you in this role and in that respect. And so uh, that's where we start tonight here uh, with this meeting. There will be a State of the Village uh, next week. I uh, will uh, name time and date at a later time on that, but uh, it's, a, I think, a good point to just see where we're at, where we've been, and where we're going ultimately uh, from the mayor's perspective. So State of the Village next week uh, will occur. So it is time to go through our organizational agenda. And uh, I will, am I reading all this? What are we gonna do here? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> here. Read it. Yeah, I'm not that mean. <laughs> Remember, we saw that point here. She may run out the door if I make that happen. <laughs> okay, uh, first off, board meetings, uh, votes and meetings, A, uh, can I get a motion that the Board of Trustees uh, be polled on all resolutions on the basis of a voice vote, except when specifically requested or required, at which time the vote will be verbally cast as either yes or no. The regular meetings of the Board of Trustees shall be held on the second and fourth Mondays of each month at 7 p.m. at the Balsa Spa Public Library's basement, 21 Milton Avenue, Balsa Spa, New York, unless otherwise advertised. A meeting may be changed to the following day at the discretion of the mayor due to holidays or emergencies. Special meetings shall be called by the mayor or two trustees acting together that upon being notified of the special meeting, the village clerk shall notify remaining members of the board by telephone and the clerk shall provide notice of the meeting to the news media and to the public as prescribed by the open meetings law. Also, the clerk is to notify the members by phone and shall ver uh, verify if members cannot attend with the other members. The 2025 organizational meeting of the Board of Trustees will be held on Monday, January 6, 2025 at 7 p.m. at 21 Milton Avenue, also spot New York unless otherwise advertised. To the degree that this motion conflicts with the Board of Trustees rules of procedure, the rules of procedure shall take precedence over the conflicted item. Trustee Fondenza. Trustee Price Bush, discussion. Just a couple questions. Um, why are some of these items, they seem very similar to the rules of procedure and they're not, why would they be here instead of in the rules of procedure? Carla, maybe that's a question for you. Is it, I know that's how it was done last year and maybe forever, but I'm just wondering if it, why it wouldn't be just folded in. Uh, I think it's, I think it's just because it's been like this on the organizational meetings. There's no legal requirement for it to be there. Um, but I think it's helpful to have it on the on this and on the rules of procedure because the rules of procedure can always be amended, and this way it's already set forth in a motion. It's the same. I, I looked at it both, and actually, the mayor and I had this very same conversation earlier today. Um, so, and at this point, the reason that we have in there that if it conflicts, the rules of procedure take precedence is to deal with any potential conflict. There isn't any right now. Um, so what that does is that allows us, if you do, if you do change the rules of procedure, it allows those rules to override this. But for right now, um, it just puts everything in one spot so that for each organizational meeting going forward, at least you have the folks out there don't need to go and look at all the rules of procedure. They can just go and look at this minutes and be like, oh, that's when the meeting is. And, thank you. And at one point there was something about emergency meetings here. So that that's going to be in the rules of procedure, right? Like where, where you can call emergency procedure. Right? It wasn't covered in the rules of procedure, so that's why we clarified it based on your email, because you, you did not want me to have just, you know, the unilateral right to do that generally. So oh, you, you <laughs> changed it up at, uh, under regular meetings through the holidays or emergency. Correct. So now we have the right to make okay. a change if uh, something happens and we need right. to make that change. Okay. Okay. Uh, at this point, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> I get a motion that the Board of Trustees uh, adopt the rules of procedure. Um, I'll make the motion. Trustee Baskin. Second. Trustee Fundenza. Discussion. Yeah. Trustee Fundenza is at the second. Yeah, so I have some comments. Um, the, the biggest concern I have, well, one of the concerns I have is the uh, two hour limit. Um, and I, was, I did the 
some research of surrounding municipalities, and it does not look like any any other uh, peer organizations have uh, limits that I see. And my concern is we only meet twice a month, and um, and it's very important to get our business done. If that that's the only time we have to get our business done, and uh, to have an arbitrary time limit if if there's still uh, business to complete. Um, seems counterproductive to me. It also, I'm worried about um, the potential for abuse where we're over two hours, so um, someone doesn't like what someone else is saying, so the discussion is cut off using that as an excuse. So I think we don't need the two hour limit. Um, there are other ways to uh, reduce some of the lengthy uh, discussions that happen, um, but I just see it as, as somewhat arbitrary and counterproductive. And again, um, I worry it'll be used um, to limit discussion and also to um, just curtail the ability to conduct business um, as needed. Um, I would have to concur with that as well. Um, I don't see a need. I think certain political realities, um, I have a feeling meters are going to be shorter anyways. Um, and I, I would hate to see someone have their first amendment rights censured because of a time limit. Um, now, if you were gonna put a time limit on it, then I would assume we would need to do something to ensure the board has the ability to respond to public comment, like perhaps a board response after both public comment periods. Um, you know, that, that would ensure that everyone gets a chance to speak, um, including the board members. Um, uh, I, I would be comfortable with that. But again, I don't see a reason for a time limit. I think um, we're probably going to not have as many heated discussions. Um, and there certainly will be a lot less filibustering um, given the current political climate. So a few thoughts. Uh, mo many municipalities don't even have two meetings a month. We are, in my mind, some of the few that have two meetings a month, many meet once a month. Um, so we we already have the ability to to have you know extra takes at a particular topic. What has happened in our meetings for those that have been here, but for those who don't normally get to attend, is that motions have come to this board that were not finished, that had to be rewritten and corrected in live time. So what I think the intention of this is if something is not ready at that meeting, and it's very obvious where, you know, when things aren't ready, there's a lot of discussion and we just kind of gridlock. It forces us to take a pause, you know, break after this meeting and then discuss it further and really try to hammer out those issues. So I, I appreciate your, your <coughs> talk on this, Ben and Sean, but in practice, uh, I, I just think that we really should give this a try because um, what has been happening with rewrites of motions in the middle of stuff is just not productive and has really wasted everyone's time, especially the public's. Um, so what we can accomplish in two hours, if you know, often you guys have said that we haven't been able to, you know, come to an agreement on email. So this will, this is another way to kind of force us to really try to come to some agreement also through that means. So uh, I, I think the way this is written, I'm, I'm happy to give it a try and, you know, God forbid, if it's not working, we can always revisit it. But I, I think uh, let's move forward with this. Thanks. Uh, again, I think for the last 18 months, the email collaboration has been attempted and it's been an abject failure. Um, and I think quite oftentimes the best way to get it done is to hammer it out in the meeting um, while we're all here instead of a, a back and forth. Um, so I also, again, I, I, I'm not really seeing an issue with the motions per se. If there's a motion that is poorly written or there's dispute, you can simply table it for the next meeting. That's not an issue. Um, you know, very simple thing to do, very quick to do. Yeah, I think. It takes I think, us, I'm sorry. It, it takes us an hour to get to that point sometimes to say we need to table something. So we're on a clock. We got to move forward. Not you know, do the business of this village. Not waste people's time. I hear you. And I, I, I think let's give it a try. I, I, um, the, the I, I would suggest this. How about we not do it 
And then if it turns out the meetings are just as long, we can always amend the rules and procedures. Well, we have a motion on the the, the, uh, Mary, would you like I, to say anything? I do agree that the board members should have a response. Um, I also agree with the limit. It is, so I'm kind of I'm torn here because I understand both points of views, but I think if we can make sure that the there is a time for the board to respond, um, if it has to be within the other business, so be it, as long as they do have that opportunity. Yep, it, that, that is located in other business that was uh, done purposely. It's other businesses turned into a hodgepodge anyway. And so <clears throat> instead of having a response in an other business, just consolidating it into other business at that point, going around the table. So, so other business would, or the time concern would be less of an issue or a concern if we have the um, promise that we will get to other business and we will have the opportunity to respond as needed at that time versus it's no. kind of Yeah, I don't see a reason why we can't just put board response after each pub public comment period. If you wanna use other business for additional stuff, that's fine. You could also get rid of it altogether. Well, it is true. We put in public, res public response or uh, board response in response to public uh, demand for it. They want us to be able to, in real time, respond to their questions and concerns. And so I was disappointed to see it taken out because that was by both sides of the aisle, everybody was saying, we appreciate this public uh, response. And when we didn't respond, people got pretty upset. So um, it seems like a very important part of the agenda. Uh, the one thing we want to avoid is the immediately answering the question as it's answered. That turns into a complete chaotic nightmare. And actually two meetings ago, because of we did it that way, we had 45 minute public comment period, which is great for the public if it was actually 45 minutes of them speaking, but that's, that wasn't the case. I think a, a board response with a structure like that will be very efficient and productive. It's true. I think that's where the extended timing comes. It's not the motions. It's the back and forth with the public in an unstructured way. And if we could be more disciplined in our response, um, that would save a lot of time as, as Trustee uh, Rain said. The, um, in terms of the motions, um, I don't see that as being the cause of uh, excessive time but in addition, as uh, Sean has mentioned, um, we can save time when uh, we submit the motions in a timely way. So I always submit the motions before Thursday at noon. Sean does, Liz did, and it allows uh, opportunity for feedback. There were two motions I submitted this time. I um, asked them to be on the agenda. I don't see them. They were replaced by other motions without my knowledge or consent. We're gonna talk more about that later, but that's not the proper way to manage motions. And um, in a similar vein, <laughs> if you want motions that um, make sense and are not duplicative, um, I've repeatedly seen motions I've written uh, repeated right before my motion, basically the same motion. And that is completely unnecessary and, and improper. And I think what um, would help is if uh, trustee uh, Bernadette and, and Frank, if you guys followed the rules of procedure and submitted your motions by Thursday at noon. Now, Frank, I give you a little, I give you some leeway because you're doing so much with the agenda that makes sense that you may not make it. But if we all follow the rules of procedure and submitted by Thursday at noon, that would give us the opportunity to refine our motions, make them what they need to be, get the feedback, because I'm always open to feedback. What I don't like is replacing my motions without permission. Um, but I'm open to feedback and that's the way it's, it's supposed to be done is you submit something Thursday at noon and then you have all, you have four days to, uh, figure it out or, um, or at least, uh, uh, you know, obviously the agenda has to be on Friday, but before Monday, we can figure it out to save time. If people submit their motions in time. Let me offer the, uh, following two amendments because one actually needs to be made for, us. Uh, clerical error uh, purposes on the end of page. Uh, when uh, changes are accepted, uh, the paragraph uh, that ends page one 
about all members of the board will uh, have the right to place items, et cetera. All motions shall be reviewed for legality. In the middle of that paragraph, it should be Thursday before the Monday meeting, not Friday meeting. Thanks, Mary, uh, for catching that error. Um, and then uh, another amendment, uh, so stack, stacking two amendments here, uh, so that the other change would be, if I can find it, uh, in the last page, uh, about the meeting time limit uh, to accommodate uh, up to 30 additional minutes to allow for the sub second public comment section and add the words and up to 15 minutes for any board response. Uh, All right, that's good. And that would be good. the offerings of amendments. So you accept yeah. the amendments, well, it sounds like? Well, that, that yeah, that should be Hold sort on. of- You accept the amendments. Well, I'm discussing the amendments. Can well, I discuss what you just suggested? It's either yes or no. Do you accept or no? My, I want clarification if I can. So for the 15 minutes, I I think I would accept that amendment if it's if it's um, I don't know what the word legal word de facto pro forma just routine that it that that's what happens um, versus in, it's in your discretion if we're over two hours mm -hmm. that we should be able to you know have the right to respond if we have something to respond not. Um, because here it says if we if we extend the 30 minutes, we have to extend the 15 minutes, Ben, is what I would uh, say that is. So if I extend the 30 minutes for public comment, I'm extending the 15 minutes for uh, board response. If there's no public comment extension, then there's no board response for necessity. Well, but well, there could still be public comment within the two hours. Do we still get a guarantee of a board response? Yes, because I'm going to not cut off the public comment in that situation. So, but, right, but that I'm clear on the public comment piece. So, what you're saying is you're going to put within the rules and procedure board response after the public comment. Well, no, I, in the case of uh, extension uh, guarantee of a period for board response in that situation. Why not just put it in? It's there in other business. It's just we're not going to call other business in this case. Well, I don't know. I think Sometimes. it's more specific. Just call it board response, board response. I think at times it has been board response has been used to uh, make speeches, mm -hmm. pontificate. Mm -hmm. uh, one meeting specifically uh, interrogating another board member. It, uh, very inappropriately so. So at this point, I mean, it's been abused left and right. So I, 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 so I don't know what, maybe Frank can come up with a solution, but at this point, I think everybody just I, kind so, of abused. So I, third, I understand. A, a third amendment uh, to try to meet the middle here uh, is to change 15 to, uh, to other business, including, but not limited to board response to public comment. So that is uh, clear. Well, just add board response after every public comment. Because it, it, limit on the, because we board get board a double up, and I don't want to do a double up. See, so I, I don't I don't think we need it, Sean, after the first uh, public comment because it's all about the motions okay. or it's supposed to be, and so therefore I we get to discuss the motions yeah. in discussion. Um, we'll discuss that. My my concern is just say public comment ends at two hours that we should still, if we want to, have the ability to go beyond two hours to respond. And that's what this would enable to do. So do you accept the with three amendments? The one so that happens automatically. It's not just at your discretion. If In we, the discretion, if I extend public comment, I'm extending also the response period. What, what if public comment ends at two hours? We're not good. So first off, you could vote to extend, okay? As a board, you could. You could dispense with the rules under a motion and a second and a vote. So that's always an option yeah, on the table. That, I'm sorry, that means that a couple of board members could probably not be able to exercise their First Amendment right. This is fully down. <laughs> yeah. and, and I understand, Bernadette, that you don't like everything that other people say. That's that's irrelevant. That's actually, no, I'm not done talking, please. That's irrelevant because we have things that we think are important to say, and we may not agree with what you have to say, but uh, we are also on the board, we represent people, and um, it's important that we all have a voice. Okay, so we've offered three amendments. I don't think we're gonna go much further here at this point. So do you accept the three amendments? What are the three amendments? The clerical error on the Monday meeting question, the addition of the, uh, folks, okay. I'll let folks uh, exit. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Mm -hmm.
Changing 15 from other business to other business, including but not limited to board response to public comment and adding the words uh, at the uh, in the paragraph about two hours, uh, stating uh, and up to 15 minutes for board response. Um, yeah, I just want that 15 minutes to be, uh, you know, automatic. Do you as a second? Uh, let's do a voice vote. That was it. That was the only thing. The, well, the, the 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 other the other I have another piece of this, not okay. not what we just talked about, but something else. Um, well, another thing you added in was all motions shall be reviewed for legal legality and legal necessity by the attorney for the village, and of course that, that's her. Yeah, that's so. <laughs> so, of course, that makes sense that they need to be legal motions. Uh, a lot of motions um, are not legally necessary. So for example, Wiswall Park is not legally necessary to have, but we make motions to, because we think uh, they are in the best interest of the village, it'll improve quality of life or the quality of uh, governance here. And, and we think they're important. So I wouldn't wanna put another screen or enlist our, our legal uh, counsel uh, in the effort to screen out motions. And I've had this experience, which is why I'm talking about this, where I submit motions, there's no response uh, saying that the motions are good, bad, or need editing, they just don't appear. And um, so again, it's important for all our voices to be present on this and not have any voices suppressed in one way or the other. So um, I'm concerned, I, it's okay to have that there, but I'm, I'm just expressing uh, my concern that it's not uh, abused. As Carly anyway. points out, it says review, not approved. It's not an approval tool. It's a review right. to make sure yeah, that's in the right and you've spot. Been, and you've been doing that, and I've appreciated that. It has been helpful, so thank you. Okay, that's fine. So, Carla, is that going to give you sufficient time Thursday at noon to be able to review all the motions? For, uh, how many no motions do you plan on doing? I've seen most of the alphabet in the past one. So um, we've gotten to ask. Come on now. <laughs> um, I have been able to over the past couple of years review all of the motions. This just um, it allows the it allows the um, back and forths that I get copied on not to occur. And when it says review for legality and legal necessity, I can present to the board my concerns and you can take it or leave it. Um, and I've never had an issue <laughs> reviewing them all, and you all actually get an annotated agenda before every meeting uh, discussing everything. Yeah, so, and, I, yeah. and I think that's worked well, so thank you. Voice vote. Trustee Baskin. Aye. We're all out of order. I don't have a down now. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Mundane. Yes. Trustee Price first. Yes. Trustee Raven. That's it. What about me? Oh, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is on the event, uh, version of the uh, motion. Don't forget. Okay. Half page down. <laughs> Here we go. Number four A uh, in general resolutions training. Can I get a motion that we're at? There is to be uh, to be during the coming official year. <laughs> A, the New York Annual Conference of Mayors Annual Meeting and Training School. B, New York State Conference of Mayors Fall Training School for Finance Officers and Municipal Clerks. And C, Schools for Department of Public Works Working Supervisors. And whereas it is determined by the Board of Supervisors that attendance by certain municipal officers, employees at one or more of their meetings, conferences, or schools benefits the municipality, now therefore be it resolved. In section one, the village of board of trustees, the village clerk, the village treasurer, the deputy village treasurer, accounting assistant, public works working supervisor, and other employees as appropriate are hereby authorized to attend the above listed conferences and schools and others as determined by the mayor. In section two, that this <coughs> resolution shall take effect immediately. Right, Trustee Fondensa. Second. Trustee Raymond, discussion. I don't know if it matters. The second, where, as you said, Whereas it's determined by the Board of Supervisors yeah. versus trustees, but we know it's trustees. Amend uh, the word supervisors, trustees. No, yeah. no it, it verbally it? you said it. Did it's, I read? It's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, it's, it's yeah. as written, and then it's a motion as written. Sorry. Listen. 
Five pages out here. Matters. I just wanted to, yeah. in case I'll it does. Paste. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. In mileage reimbursement B, can I get a motion that whereas the Board of Trustees is determined to pay a fixed rate for a mileage as reimbursement to officers and employees of the village who shall use their personal vehicles while performing their official duties on behalf of the village. Now, therefore, be it resolved, section one, that the Board of Trustees shall approve a reimbursement to such officers and employees at the current IRS reimbursement rate. Section two, that the resolution shall take effect immediately. Trustee Fundenza. That's the Price Bush discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. The following is for information uh, purposes only and is not to be voted on. Trustee liaison app appointments. The following appointments of liaisons for the purpose of assisting the executive are made by the mayor and will serve at the pleasure of the mayor. <coughs> Deputy Mayor Bernadette Fundanza Perez. Liaison to, Depar to Department of Public Works, Sean Raymond. To Fire Department, Bernadette uh, Vendanza Perez. Nine. <laughs> Police Department, yours truly. Uh, Parks and Tree Board, Ben Baskin. Library, Mary Price Bush. Insurance and Human Resources, Bernadette. Youth and Social or Youth Social Services Agencies, Mary Price Bush. Not for profit organizations, Ben Baskin. Senior Social Services Agencies and Senior Welfare, Mary Price Bush. And BSBPA, Bernadette. Moving on to the consent agenda for clerk appointments. Can I get a motion that Terry O'Connor be appointed village clerk for a period of four years with the end date not to be before December. And let me explain actually before I read this out. You're gonna see this added uh, all the time uh, because our prior official year used to end on essentially March 31st or thereabouts. Uh, we are trying to make sure that when we go back into the records for these that we have an indication of what the intention was for end dates as we're changing the official year now and making sure that people that were in holdover positions for the last eight months that we're correcting the <coughs> roster of appointments as we go along. So we're doing this to make sure it is clear what the end dates were intended to be, especially if we were to ever, let's say, change the official year again, it will assist us in knowing what the intentions were here at this point. And this is one of the struggles we had when trying to go through who was uh, vacant, who wasn't ultimately uh, from this last month or so, trying to figure this all out. So now may I get a motion that Terry O'Connor be appointed village clerk for a period of four years with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2027. Melissa McCann be appointed village treasurer for a period of four years with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2027. Trisha Hasbrook be appointed deputy village clerk for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Rebecca Little be appointed deputy village treasurer for a period of one year, although subject to probationary part-time employment that could be terminated through May 18th, 2024. At the probationary period, the end date of this appointment shall not be before December 31st, 2024. Terry O'Connor be appointed registrar vital statistics for a period of one year, with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Trisha Hasbrook be appointed deputy registrar of vital statistics for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. The village clerk be designated the record manage records management officer with the necessary powers to carry out the efficient administration of the preservation of all official village records received by the clerk's office, departments of the village of Balsa Spa, including all personnel and human services records for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Trustee Vandenza. Trustee Baskin, discussion. I just have a question about which um, physicians require appointment. Um, Carl, this might be a question for you. Because uh, appointing people affords them protections from termination, right? That just an employee doesn't. I mean, I was talking to NICOM about um, these issues <laughs> a while ago. And um, what they were saying is um, that to, when you appoint someone, um, it means it's very, not that we want to get rid of me, but it makes it very difficult to, to get rid of someone during the appointment, but between appointments, you can get rid of them for any reason whatsoever. But it, so it, I'm just wondering, is, is it necessary? Obviously some of these positions, and this is just a point of information are um, required to be appointed. Are they all? Which ones are you concerned with? Um, well, I, I just, I guess I was a little surprised, although I think it's been, we've done it before, the deputies, the deputy bills, deputy treasurer. Deputies have to be appointed. All of them? Okay. They're an officer, so they have to be appointed. All right, so they all have to be appointed. Yes. All right, that was my question. Thank you. 
Um, have the clerk and the treasurer's terms always been four years? It was uh, fixed in the 60s, so we found the resolution for that. Oh, okay. Yep. I had that exact question. Yeah. We located that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have some changes uh, in the uh, police officers and crossing guards, so uh, follow along here. I will read them off. In the consent agenda, annual st uh, staff appointments, number seven, can I get a motion that Brandy Burns be appointed associate village justice for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. The following individuals be appointed part-time police officers for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Michael DiMartino, Scott Ostrander, Jason Quinones, Michael Welch, Robert Kennedy, Stanley DeLong, Hector Monge, Ariel Santiago, Gregory E. Happensteiner, Kyle Basta, James Redden, Sam Carlson, and Charlie Fisher. The following individual be, individuals be appointed crossing guards for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024, Carmen Isabella, Doug Fuller. The following individual be appointed fire policeman for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024, Lloyd Hellman as captain, Robert Kalinsky as first lieutenant, Al Summers, Stanley DeLong, Carmen Isabella, Richard Duffy, Thomas Nolan, Alan Cunningham, Frederick Rittridge, Patrick Mangini, John J. Morrissey, the following individuals be approved as Boston Spa Fire Department leadership for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Fire Chief Michael Bayshore, First Assistant Chief Colby Crow, Second Assistant Chief Bill Kenny, Third Assistant Chief Colby Crow, Boston Spa Fire Department Secretary Treasurer Stanley DeLong, Fire Department Administrator Glenn Bowers Jr., that William Lewis be appointed Assistant Building Inspector for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Bob Cavanaugh be appointed the fire code enforcement officer for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Bob Cavanaugh be appointed inventory control officer for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Frank Rossi Jr. be appointed budget officer for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Trustee Pondenza. I'll give it to Trustee Raymond discussion. <laughs> One quick question. What is an inventory control officer? He actually literally uh, takes stock of uh, vehicles and major equipment to make sure it's asset tagged when necessary and accounted for. How's that? Works for me. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You ready for this one? I'm going to go slightly fast on this. Uh, consent agenda number eight. Board and committee appointments. Can I get a motion that Roy O'Connor be appointed chair of the planning board for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. This does not uh, affect his term. Peter Martin be reappointed as a member of the planning board for a period of five years with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2028. Aaron McCready be appointed as an alternate to the planning board for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024, replacing Michael Ragabarone. <laughs> Paul Dunkelbarger be reappointed as an alternate to the planning board for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Anna Stanko be appointed chair of the zoning board for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. This does not affect her term. Kevin McDonough be reappointed as a member of the zoning board for a period of five years with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2028. Paul Lasky be reappointed as an alternate to the zoning board for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Donna Martin be appointed as an alternate to the zoning board for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024, replacing Mary Price Bush. Uh, Skip Brandy Burns, we already approved her. The following individuals be reappointed to the Committee on Sexual Harassment and Discrimination period, uh, Prevention for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Anna Stanko, Bernadette Fondeza Perez, Terry O'Connor. Anna Stanko be reappointed as chair to the Committee on Sexual Harassment and Discrimination and Prevention for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Judy Esposito and Caitlin Parwana be reappointed to the Park and Tree Board for a period of three years with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2026. Caitlin Parwana be appointed as chair of the Park and Tree Board for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Christopher Dubuque and Janelle Coffey be appointed as alternates to the Park and Tree Board for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. <laughs> Note, they may later be elevated to full membership after the board reviews some membership guidelines related to the Park and Tree Board later in 2024. The following individuals be appointed or reappointed to the Committee on Police Procedures 
for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. For reappointment, Kelly Gregory, Homer Nathan, Ray Otten, Lori Riggs. For appointment, Robert Bush Jr. Ray uh, Otten be appointed as chair of the Committee on Police Procedures for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. Bob Cavanaugh be appointed as a member of the Revenue Advisory Board until that board's business is completed, replacing Mary Price Bush. Lori AC be reappointed as a member of the Library Board for a period of five years with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2028. Emily Bartell be reappointed as a member of the Committee on the Arts for a period of three years with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2026. Mm -hmm. Trustee Fundain, son. Trustee Price Bush, discussion. Uh, one thing I want to mention, uh, I was disappointed to see Nathan Ward uh, replace his alternate. He had, um, He's not replaced. Where is, is he still on? He will be a holdover. Uh, we're having a discussion with him uh, on Sunday. So uh, he is a rollover or holdover. So he will still be a member as a uh, alternate for this time. But like for a year or? Until mean, replaced or uh, officially extended. And how come he's not being treated the same way as these others? At this point, after discussing with the chair, we have some questions about uh, attendance and participation. And so we just want to clarify it, make sure that uh, we've got everybody on the same page. And so that's why we're not going to make a appointment that we can't take back at that point. Uh, all right. In that case, I'd like to just read part of a letter that he wrote regarding the attendance. Um, this is what he said. I'd like to be considered to continue to serve as a planning board alternate. Although I have never been called upon to sit on the board for a meeting, I have learned a lot from attending the vast majority of the planning board's meetings over the past years. I take my role as alternate seriously by reviewing materials provided and applicable code ahead of each meeting. Furthermore, my connections to the businesses around the area provide me with a pulse of the area. He goes on to talk about how um, there was an opportunity for him to uh, serve on the planning board because they were short he only had four people, uh, and uh, and that was uh, he was not uh, called upon as he should have been. But uh, it sounds as if he really wanted to be and uh, was quite willing and interested and uh, eager to do so. And from so, the chair that I uh, asked about at the meeting, question was a non-voting one with the last minute vacancy, as he recalled. Beyond that, he re rarely attended and contributed less, and so that we want to get down to the bottom. But as I said, because we had the same concerns last year and the same. Uh, or, well, two years ago, the same bad time, same bad channel here uh, with an organizational meeting. So at this point, uh, we're not replacing him. We're just not officially appointing him in this meeting. Yeah, I know we've had discussions in the past that, you know, alternate serving should have their opportunity to have full membership. And I've noticed none of that's happened. And I was just curious as to why, you know, when we discussed that, you know, people put their time in as alternates to have an opportunity to have full membership why they haven't been rolled in. You know, that specifically happened while uh, Christina was still mayor. Uh, my position on zoning board was vacated and there was a wonderful man that was very committed as an alternate. He was not appointed to that full-time position. So I, I think, okay, you so know what I'm saying? So I, I, I think I, this is kind of a silly thing. We're I understand sit down and you, talk with Nathan. you found one exception, but that doesn't mean the general principle isn't good. Okay. We are sitting down with Nathan. I specifically saw that email and I was like, hey man, let's have a coffee and sit down and talk about it. So we are going to so meet with him. You're sitting down with him as in what, as what, or just a trustee? That's usually the way it works. Yeah. Also, you and I are friends, and yeah. I, I wanted to hear what was going on. Well, I, I just, I, I find the, the juxtaposition of not putting any alternates in the planning <laughs> board, but you're going to have folks who are going to be alternates on the park and tree, and they're not even potentially serve a, one year, and they're become full members. So how do we, well, how actually, do we rationalize we, and make that a logical argument? We have a vacancy currently uh, based on something to happen with the park and tree board, because the code reads that is at least five members and a sixth member was appointed. Ed Hirsch has stepped down. So there's a vacancy technically of a formally filled position. So none of the, none of, excuse position? me for one second, none of those makes sense. And so the logic is to probably go to seven, an odd number, and fix the code so that we don't have the ambiguity number anymore. And that's why it was referenced there. So that, that's something that's always bothered me. It's like, why is this an ambiguous number on a park tree board that may have a vote? For instance, what, what the park and tree board recommended is um, have 
five regular people on that board and one alternate is what their recommendation is just to remind them. Well, he's saying that nobody's elevating, but there's, some, you know, we have a desire for reappointments. Uh, in the I just wanted to make that something there. There actually, uh, Paul Dunkelbarger was reappointed as alternate. So there was an alternate, there is an alternate that was appointed tonight. Well, I just wanted to make sure you saw He it. was reappointed as an alternate. Right, I just wanted to make, you said there was an I'm alternate. I'm just wondering why sure alternates that. haven't been appointed as full members. Uh, let's go roll call. Trustee Baskin. Aye. Trustee Von Dainsa? Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Price Bush? Yes. Trustee Raymond? Yes. Mayor Rossi? Yes. <laughs> okay, number nine, consent agenda miscellaneous. Having a motion that the following banks be designated as the <laughs> depositories of the village fund subject to change by resolution of the board of trustees at any time, the Adirondack Trust Company and or Generations Bank. The Daily Gazette be designated as the official village newspaper. The village clerk be authorized to send a single letter to the news media providing the schedule of regular meetings. Further, the village clerk shall post a public notice of such schedule. Field four be appointed as historian of the village of Boston Spot for a period of one year with the end date not to be before December 31st, 2024. To retain <coughs> Bartlett Pontiff, Stewart and Rhodes, PC as counsel for the village for the 2024 year pursuant to the terms of the legal services agreement and authorizing the mayor to execute said agreement. The village procurement policy has been reviewed and readopted by the village board. Trustee Fundenza. Second. Trustee Raymond discussion. So I expressed my one concern about the um, legal contract and uh, based on billing, I may bring it forward in future meetings. Okay, well, we're approving the legal services agreement. So. Oh, the other question is I have, uh, Mayor, um, the previous contract, you recused yourself, I'm just wondering, uh, should you not recuse yourself for this vote? I didn't even negotiate this one. I, I basically just passed it off to everybody. So in this case, there was not the level of negotiation from the last one. So, right, so, so are you recusing yourself? I'm not recusing myself. No, I didn't, did I didn't negotiate time. this. So Well, that, that's different than not recuse. So last time you recused yourself. Because, because, at, because last time, unfortunately, Ben, Carla was right. And I didn't feel that I could represent the village in the proper context because she was right in what she was saying, I felt. And what was going on and some of your tack on the whole thing was an attack that I felt was inappropriate. So I stood out of it. That's not the right. same thing in the situation. Carla said you did not need to recuse yourself. And I chose to. That's my right. And it's also my but right what has, not to. What has changed? Because I just explained the difference between last time and this time. You said Carla was right. What, which she, she, she was right that you did not need to recuse yourself last time. What was the difference between last time and this time? What was, what, why did you recuse yourself last time? I just explained it. I didn't, all, all I, did, I did not hear you explain it. I heard what you said, what you did, but you did not ever, you all never, those. and you actually brought Liz, you, you threatened to bring her to an ethics committee review for asking you why you recused yourself last time. So I'm just trying to understand why you recused yourself last time. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes and have it. not now. And the motion carries. It's very strange. Other motions. Can I get a motion approving the agreement <coughs> between Cormos and Company, Elizabeth Cormos as principal, and the Village of Balsa Spa for the limited purposes of completion <coughs> and submission of the TAP CMAC application and authorizing the mayor to execute <coughs> such agreement? Note the agreement uh, was being completed revised prior to the meeting. However, uh, it has been circulated since, and this is in defendants and is not in the affirmative at that. I'll second. On dates. <laughs> uh, Baskin, we'll give it to Baskin on this one. Discussion. So here, this and the next uh, motions are examples of um, replacement motions. The first one I think is fine. There should have been conversation before this meeting on uh, what you were doing because I submitted, according to the rules of, of procedure, current and, and past, um, before noon on Thursday, two motions that do not appear on this, uh, this agenda and they are supposed to be on this agenda. I think if you had sent me the first motion, I would have said, okay, that is a fine uh, edit to the motion and it talks about the contract, which is important. 
and uh, we didn't have a contract at the time. And thank you, Carla, for quickly getting one together. Um, the second motion, I would not have accepted this particular language for, but again, the whole process was not proper. I asked for two motions go on when you, when you uh, created the agenda, they weren't on there. I asked why there was no response whatsoever from anybody. Um, and I did not see these motions until uh, maybe today. Okay, first off, I don't know if you've noticed the emails going back and forth between Liz and me. And thank you, Liz, for working with me and uh, Bernadette as well to work on the TAPC Mac. We still have some things. I was, uh, for instance, making sure the 75% number uh, about Malta Avenue School is <laughs> accurate. It's not, according to what I understand. So I'm trying to get the correct figure for that. I also want to talk to uh, the folks at LaBella about the change you had made about the sidewalk, the cost, et cetera, and make sure we are not exposing ourselves. And so I'm gonna do that over the next two days so that we can submit this hopefully Friday is the goal date at the worst uh, situation. So thank you for working with us on this in the back and forth. That is why this wording, the second one has to be the wording of the second one. And this is work with Carla's assistance because we were not in a position to just approve it. And this is another example of if we sat here and did it by hand, we would be wasting everybody's half an hour probably that's not necessary to say essentially we're approving this, we just have to make a few fixes to this. With respect to the agreement, Carla, go ahead. Um, the agreement between Cornell's mm -hmm. company. Well, yeah, that was something we def we needed to do, and, and Liz and I worked on it today, and there was no problem with that. Um, the, then to your to your issues with respect to the motions, I made the changes. Frank did not make the changes, and I let me finish. I, I made the changes because they did not make sense um, because they had to be more specific, uh, especially with A, uh, for the purposes of completing it and authorizing the mayor, and B, that was put in there. Uh, again, I made those changes, and I actually, I made these changes, and I took out some changes that Frank put in. So we went back and forth today to do that because what the, you wanted to do was authorize the execution and submission but you could not do it because you don't have anything to look at right now to submit. So we did this, you know, I did it that way. It was submitted to the board hours ago and you never reached out and said, what is the problem with this concern? What is the problem with that? That's, that would be fine. Um, but I rewrote the motion to make it so that the board could approve it tonight. Liz could get approved and then it could be submitted. Otherwise, the way it was written, it was not, you didn't have anything before you to review to submit, so you couldn't have passed that motion. We would have been stuck on Monday, right. and then that would give us one right. day to submit, basically, because the ninth is- You mean we didn't have a final draft? We still don't. Right. All right, so these, this is my expectation. If I submit a motion, I expect the conversation to include me, not just you and Frank, but whoever submits the motion should be included in the conversation about how the motion needs to change. That is the proper way to make sure that everyone's voice is, uh, is properly represented on the board. I probably would have agreed to the changes. What I don't like seeing and what is a completely improper, and I don't just blame you, Carla, but I, I'm sad, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to see that you were part of this, is that um, when people <laughs> apply, mo provide motions, they need to be reflected in the agenda. If there's a problem with the motion, it needs to be uh, feedback back to the writer. You received it within 15 minutes after we drafted it. And I did right. not hear anything from you. And, and I, I don't want to No, be, I received no, it right before this meeting. No. I mean, it was very quick. No, it wasn't right before this meeting. It was hours and hours ago. It was early this afternoon. Oh, that I consider that right before this meeting. That's what I, I consider hours before this meeting, but right before this meeting. This is contract, and that was three hours after this was sent. By the time this is on the meeting, by the yeah, because I didn't expect this is my sort of property. This motion, okay? Unlike the contract, which is something that I can give some feedback. Your typos, for example, on the contract. This is involves me. I'm the author. So I expect before it goes on the agenda, before it's distributed to the public, before that, I expect something, not after it's distributed. I think that's reasonable. 
I think what's reasonable is that we're not wasting the public's time because yeah. it's actually the village's property, wow. not any of our individual property at this point in time. And I am sorry you got in the middle of this because you don't deserve that kind of treatment. I'd, I'd like our, our uh, motions to be respected uh, regardless, motion, motion regardless a, of where they come from. Motion A is what is to be discussed here at this point. So we are, do we have any discussion about motion A about the uh, contract between Cornell's company and Village Ball Spa? No, if I'm not, fine, I'm fine with that. all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Can I, motion, can I get a motion authorizing the mayor to execute any and all documents required to finalize and submit the TAP CMAC grant only after the mayor has received sufficient input from board members that the application is, is acceptable and ready for submission. Trustee Fondenza, Trustee Raymond on the second discussion. So hasn't everyone uh, provided input at this point? I just explained the things that need to be still fixed. My letter needs to be changed because the amount of money that we're matching changed yesterday and I'm just verifying that number as well. Again, I'm working with Liz. That's working with Liz respectfully here. I would think that's exactly what you want to have happen here. Again, Liz, thank you for being very responsive over the last couple of days on this. I understand I want to have this to you a little bit earlier, obviously trying to get this all together too. Uh, took a little precedence here, but I also want to make sure that it's done this week, as I said, because January 9th is the due date and going to January 8th was not fair to you or anybody else at that point. So we're getting the calls. I already actually spoke with Kessel Ring today, they gave me some information for uh, Canadian Pacific as well, just to have a conversation about thoughts generally about some stuff, make sure that we don't need to change wording or something like that as well. It's better to have the knowledge now than later on it, realize we messed something up. And so that's what I've been trying to work on here, Ben. You're welcome. All uh, in favor? No, wait a second. I'm not uh, done talking. Uh, thank, thank you, Frank, for working on yeah. it. Um, I was just wondering, um, how long do you think it would take to wrap up and should we just put some sort of deadline in this motion so that we know what happens? I, like I said, I'm self-describing to get this thing uh, pushed in Friday. And so for me, I'm going so to ask you. close the business Thursday wrapped up or close the business Thursday wrapped up? Were we, I, in the year saying? I, the deadline's January 9th. Yeah, so I, the goal is to say by January 5th, let's go ahead. All right. Well, I'm in, I'm encouraged to hear you say that. Um, I hope that this uh, this wording isn't used as a reason to kill the grant. Ultimately, I hope that we go forward. Oh, Bad. Oh, no, you know right, that's good. that's a narrative that's got to stop. <laughs> no, I'm I'm saying I'm, an... I there's reason to be suspicious. And Sus okay. So we I'm glad. I said I've been asked by the BSPPA what our intentions were. That you all were on that email. Um, Alex has asked about the the uh, connection for Zim Smith. Twice. There's been, and we have, you know, I believe you sp spoke with Alex. Um, numerous people have asked us, and we've described it. Yes, we are supportive of it. And Liz, thank you. I think right now is just those um, little fiddly things, you know. And thank you because you know you helped clarify my understanding of something <laughs> earlier today. And so I, I think that's just a little silly. We want to see it move forward. Of course, we want to see money come into the yeah. village. It's just I'm glad to hear that because um, my suspicions are based. You in, keep saying uh, you these keep things that you are keep, inappropriate. You keep interrupting me, Bernadette. Um, are based on an, the initial response from uh, you and Frank. So I'm glad that now you are committed to seeing this through. Also, I was very disappointed after BSBPA sent a letter of support. You responded to them saying, oh, you, you basically bad mouthed the grant right after they sent the letter of support and completely undermining. I'll show you, I'll send you the email. It was, it was I, utterly I inappropriate. So I, that's why I feel I'm ben, worried. This is the stuff that gets you in trouble. That's, you say that's, stuff out of the pocket of your mouth that makes no that's, sense. That's this why I'm why worried, but I'm glad. Unbelievable. I'm okay. glad okay. that Let's you are at the stage where, um, where, and I just want to say one more thing, which oh, is. Uh, why stop now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> could, again, as a. One, 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 one other thing I just want to say is people should understand that when you write a grant, um, the important thing, and, and this from, uh, I've, Liz and I have written a lot of grants, I've reviewed grants. Um, the concept needs to be good and the data needs to be within a certain margin of error. But in addition, the people who, re who review the grant understand that things will change. They understand that something might be a little off. It's okay to have some 
level of discrepancy and it shouldn't be it shouldn't stop us from from uh submitting this okay ben one thing mr grant writer that you are aware of i would hope is that if we are wrong on numbers and we win the grant but have additional expenses the entity that is responsible to make up the difference is the village so if we're above the 20 percent we would be responsible for more than just the 20 percent or we'd have to give the grant money back that those are the only two decisions we have at that point so obviously so, excuse me now that you're interrupting me the whole idea here is to make sure we are protecting the village in terms of making sure the right numbers are in here and justifiably, and that's what I'm working on with Liz. Liz made some changes yesterday. She caught the fact that curbing was uh, involved when it shouldn't have been uh, in some of the numbers, so it overestimated numbers. But then it took the sidewalk cost down to around $13 a square foot, which sounds a little artificially low, Liz, and I can lie. And so I just want to talk to LaBella about are you okay with that number ultimately? Is that the way it should work? That protects the village at the end of the day on the other side of this of having exposure. That's what I'm doing here. I've spent my entire Sunday, uh, New Year's Eve until basically uh, what about six o'clock. I think you and I both agree that we had other things we needed to do. And then Monday, going through comments and getting this straightened out. Obviously, I wouldn't do that if I wanted to kill a grant because I have much better things to do with my time than do that. So let's right. just be real. So here. I appreciate you spending the time. You did spend a lot of time, and Liz spent a lot of time. And, Indeed. Um, and I and obviously the numbers have to be within a, a certain ballpark. So thank you for working on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Going to get a motion that the organizational meeting be adjourned at 8.01 p.m. <laughs> Make the motion. <laughs> Trustee Price Bush. I'll second. Trustee Raymond, discussion. All in favor? Uh, opposed motion carries we'll see you on january 8th monday for our first regular meeting of 2024 good night everybody thanks for joining us <laughs>